All right, good Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Matt Karen. Welcome to The Real Story. It is campaign season, and uh, there's a lot of political newcomers, experienced incumbents. Point is, your vote is going to matter when it comes to November. Today, we're going to be breaking down the congressional race in the 2nd District, where incumbent Democrat Joe Courtney is facing Republican Justin Anderson. We want to begin now with uh, Congressman Joe Courtney. Joe, thanks so much for joining us. It's always great to talk with you. Hi, Matt. Thanks for the invitation. Glad you're doing this. So I wanted to start with this, uh, you know, COVID-19. Uh, and for those of you who may not know, you are the one who sponsored the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, more commonly called the CARES Act. That was what got people who were on unemployment their extra $600 a week and then the personal checks that were cut to people. But as we both know, the pandemic is far from over. People are still losing their jobs. Uh, so the question is, do you think the American people deserve another round of direct payments? And I have a feeling that you're about to tell me about a vote that uh, you will be taking very soon. Sure. So the answer to that question is absolutely yes. Um, and I would note that um, actually with the CARES Act, we've uh, actually passed four bills to address COVID-19, and um, they were all really strong bipartisan uh, majorities, and that's something that um, means a lot to me, um, you know, in terms of the work that I've been doing um, it, while I've been in Congress. It's one of the reasons why I want to run again and is because I think, um, particularly in my subcommittee, Sea Power, uh, we've shown, uh, you know, tremendous, uh, almost unanimous support for uh, the work that uh, we've done there in that committee. But on COVID, um, you know, there's just no question that the CARES Act, which which provided a massive infusion to sort of stabilize the economy. Uh, a lot of that um, support has, has already petered out or is about to. And another round of COVID uh, relief, I think, is, is really critical. Number one, to help small businesses with the uh, another round of the paycheck protection loans that were so successful. Uh, I've been on the phone with our hospitals and, and nursing homes who, uh, again, have taken a big hit. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of lost revenue uh, for our hospitals, um, and we really need to backfill that in order to make sure that we don't have staff layoffs or any other uh, disruption. Uh, you know, in a pandemic, healthcare is everything. Uh, we need more equipment for testing and tracing. Um, you know, the um, uh, and I do think a lot of people are having trouble paying. All right, their that's bills good. I want to move on to a different the topic. Numbers are still very high. Speaking. Yeah, Joe, speaking of the pandemic, Norwich, I know it's in your district. Yeah. We just learned that they're facing a bit of an uptick uh, spike in the infection rate. It's almost up to 7 percent. We know that community spread is happening there. Have you been in contact with uh, some of the officials in Norwich? And what do you know about what's going on there? So, again, my district office is in Norwich, and uh, my district director was actually with uh, Mayor Nystrom today, and, uh, again, a lot of the uh, folks from Bacchus Hospital and, and the public health department in the city there. And, um, uh, again, this shows that this we are far from out of the woods yet. 5% uh, positivity rate um, really is starting to get into, you know, the red zone. And um, I think, again, there's going to be great teamwork to try and address it. Uh, but it, it really uh, it was community spread. There does not appear to be any sort of hot spot. That, that is the cause of it. And, um, and it's why, again, we've really got to uh, continue to con the great work that we did in Connecticut, where we sort of, uh, uh, you know, dropped the, the curve there in terms of uh, cases. Uh, with colder weather, sure. flu season, people going inside, you know, the risk level is going higher. Uh, your district is the largest in the state geographically, but it's not nearly as liberal as some of the more populous areas. The website GovTrack puts your political ideology as a centrist Democrat. Would you agree with that assessment? And can you give me any specific examples of bipartisanship that you've uh, undertaken? Sure. So um, I think that's an accurate um, snapshot of uh, the second congressional district. And, um, you know, again, I think you know, some of the work that I've done, uh, particularly on the House Armed Services Committee, we have the largest military installation in New England with the submarine base, as well as a shipyard that's now hit 17,000 between Groton and Quonset Point. So being chairman of the Sea Power Committee, which is where we write the shipbuilding plan, um, I think is key um, to, you know, one of the major economic engines uh, in the district. Uh, there's a lot of independents and a lot of Republicans that, that work in both of those facilities. Um, but I think over time, they've really seen that uh, I am 
am somebody who has um, developed great re relationships with the Navy. Uh, I had the Secretary of the Navy, Trump Secretary of the Navy, up in August to, to tour the base and also uh, come over to the shipyard. And they've also worked really well with Republicans on the House Armed Services Committee. This year, we had to actually restore funding for a submarine that the president's budget actually cut. And uh, we were able to pass a revised budget 56 to 0 out of the House Armed Services Committee with the language that uh, myself and my Republican uh, ranking member uh, drafted to, to fix that flaw in the budget. So some of your critics on the flip side of that would say that you're too middle of the road uh, and that your bipartisanship can be viewed as middling and that more now than ever, we need someone who's willing to put the president in his place, stand up to him and fight back. Uh, have you done that? So um, I think, yes. I mean, certainly we've... Um you know, had lots of uh, oversight hearings on the House Armed Services Committee. For example, um, you know, the uh, White House reprogrammed money out of the Department of Defense to build the border wall. Uh, again, just a completely unprecedented money grab that really uh, hurt military readiness in other parts of the country. Um, and uh, again, unprecedented. No, no other president has uh, used the, uh, the Department of Defense as a piggy bank to, to pay for other priorities. And um, again, we... Uh, uh, asked tough questions of the uh, Secretary of Defense and uh, the Secretary of the Army, who uh, at the time, you know, was his account that he uh, green-lighted for, for those funds to be removed. Um, and again, it's um, in the Department of uh, Education, which comes before my other committee, Education and Labor, uh, I have grilled Secretary DeVos on, a, again, a number of her policies, particularly in terms of higher education and not protecting students from predatory um, institutions that have ripped them off. So uh, I have a, a record of uh, being very independent um, and willing to uh, stand up and speak for particularly the people in my district when there's actions that have been taken by this administration that have hurt Eastern Connecticut. Sure. Joe, I wanted to ask you this. I, you know, money is a part of politics. According to campaign finance records, more than 60 percent of your campaign contributions have come from political action committees and big corporate donors like Raytheon, who just announced that they're cutting 16,000 positions across their three companies, uh, aerospace defense companies that they own. Should you be accepting those kinds of big donations? So uh, as somebody who is a co-sponsor of uh, House Resolution 1, which is the um, elections reform, campaign finance reform uh, bill, I would like to see us move into a situation similar to what Connecticut has, uh, which is, a, again, a citizens-based uh, election fund where, uh, again, all political committees um, are, are basically out of business. But until that day comes, uh, having been through some pretty tough battles in this district, you, you need to have the resources to get your message out. Um, again, I am somebody who um, has voted against some of the, the groups that have contributed to my campaign. I voted for the uh, prescription uh, cost uh, reduction bill, which the pharmaceutical companies uh, obviously fought tooth and nail. And uh, we obviously have pharmaceutical companies in, in Connecticut that um, we're not but, too happy Joe, with that vote. But Joe, but, just but, to push so, back a little bit, and yeah, not to cut sure. you off, but Joe, just to push back a little bit, you know, you, you said you, you'd like to see the rules changed, but you can make right. your own decisions. You don't have to accept yeah. donations from big companies, so why do you? Well, first of all, they are fully transparent and disclosed, and, and you obviously uh, have done your research, and I, I'm fine with that. And I, again, I'm prepared to, to talk about every single one of those uh, contributions. I mean, some of them come from General Dynamics, which is the largest employer, uh, private employer in Eastern Connecticut. I work with them, and I don't make any secret uh, about that. So I, I think, you know, setting up... Um, you know, doing sort of unilateral disarmament, as it's called, you know, uh, when this discussion comes up, in my opinion, is not the way to do it. I was very involved with campaign finance reform in Connecticut. I worked with the Secretary of the State at the time, Miles Rappaport, when we reformed the system. You need to have that systemic reform to make real change. Trying to do it on a, on a candidate by candidate, case, uh, race by race basis, um, frankly, you're never going to get there. Uh, you need to have systemic reform. Okay. And I think with a new majority in the Senate, we're, we have a much better okay. chance of seeing that day come. Just like it did in Connecticut. 
Yeah. Hey, another big topic. You know, people are talking about this. The Supreme Court uh, nominee that President Trump put up. I know Nancy Pelosi has her opinion about this. She said she has arrows in the quiver to block the Senate from voting on President Trump's Supreme Court nominee. So I wanted to ask you, not the you know House Democrat opinion, your opinion, Joe Courtney's opinion. Do you support launching impeachment proceedings to block the president's nominee? And do you support packing the court and adding more justices? So I definitely think impeachment is, you know, at this stage of the game, is a, a complete waste of time. Um, I do think this nominee, who has a very public record of opposition to the Affordable Care Act, um, is a threat to everyone's health care in this country, not just those on the Obamacare exchanges, but anybody who's benefited from age 26 coverage, uh, you know, pre-existing conditions, protections. Um, and again, as far as, uh, I, you know, I think, you know, talking about what the, a Supreme Court reform may look like, um, I, at this point, I have, I'm not taking any big position on it, but I certainly uh, see that as a, a really kind of remote possibility. I think our better uh, focus right now should be on this nominee, uh, what her record is, what it means to the American people, particularly to their health care, because, she, again, she makes no bones about it. She thinks the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional. She will be an automatic vote to strike down that law, and it's a real case that's going to be before the court on November 10th. Okay. I want to switch topics now, something more local here. If you look at a heat map uh, of the reports of the crumbling foundations that are yeah. out there in the state of Connecticut, many of them are located in your district. This is obviously a crisis uh, for homeowners. I know this week in the special session here in Connecticut, the state legislature made sure that condo owners are able to now get some of this relief money that they need. What have you been able to do during your sure. time in Congress no, I'm to glad make you sure asked that, that this question. doesn't ruin is, is that some one financially. So uh, that heat map is actually right in my neighborhood, okay, and has affected some of my family members. This week, the U University of Connecticut was out actually doing test samples at, at a condo complex in Vernon. The funding that paid from that for that was from the federal government, the National Institute of Science and Technology. And it was my amendment in last year's appropriations bill that's funding that kind of research at UConn, which I think long term is really critical to making uh, help us find a more cost effective way to solve this problem. I've gotten money from HUD through the Community Development Block Grants into the district. I actually met in the Vernon Town Hall a couple days ago with Trump's regional HUD administrator to talk about that funding and how it's been deployed in, in uh, uh, Vernon and some of the surrounding communities. We've gotten the IRS to uh, weigh in in terms of uh, protecting homeowners from being taxed from, from payments that came out of that state fund, the, the captive insurance fund. And uh, last July, right. we, pa we passed a... a uh, infrastructure bill where I had an amendment, a Courtney amendment, to make sure that a larger chunk of CDBG monies can actually be used for home reconstruction. So uh, I've been working with the homeowners. I know them personally, the, the builders and the local officials, and we uh, are also going to help with that town and school building. We got money uh, in right. that uh, infrastructure bill to help pay for that. We have uh, about 30 seconds, and I, I hate to make this answer short, but uh, I just want to know, Joe, during your time in office, what's been your toughest vote, the hardest decision you've had to make, and why? Um, I mean, there's been a lot, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, back in 2009, uh, there was a big push to, to do a bank bailout, and uh, I was not satisfied at all that um, that was a balanced, fair bill, and I voted no on that vote. I was the only one from the Connecticut delegation, took major heat from back home uh, when that happened. But over time, I think it was the right vote. It took care of Wall Street and not Main Street, and homeowners suffered from that neglect for, for years and years. And that's why um, I think the recession took much longer to recover from. That's why we need to get a COVID relief okay. bill through uh, immediately, because that will help shorten the COVID recession. Okay, Congressman Joe Courtney from the uh, Second District of Connecticut running for re-election. We got to leave it there, but it's always great to chat with you. Thanks so much for coming on. Great, thanks, Matt. All right, and uh, coming up next on the Real Story, the man trying to unseat Congressman Courtney. I'll sit down with Republican Justin Anderson as he lays out his vision for the Second Congressional District.